Hi, it's Carmi Weininger. Welcome to the Science Behind the Saddle series of videos that take you in depth to each component of our modular saddle system. Watch them all to find out how every piece works and can be customized to give you a remarkable and shock absorbing ride. If you'd like to stay informed, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to the EQ Saddle Science YouTube channel. So let's talk flapless today. I've been looking forward to making this video because we get to talk about the dramatic and really good things that happen to riders as soon as the flaps come off the saddle. To understand what we've done in creating the EQ platform, consider this. We've completely reinvented the saddle so that the rider experience on the top is completely different in our system from any other saddle. On the horse's side, underneath, our Equiflex panels and dense rubber shock absorbers give the horse a completely different experience as well. We cover the horse side in another video in this series. Today, we're going to focus on what happens to riders when they get into a saddle and the flaps come off. In a moment, I'd like to show you photos and some very cool video that we've got where the horse and rider are the same, but the saddle changes and you'll see what a dramatic difference it makes when the only thing that changes is the sitting platform between the horse and the rider. First though, I'd like to give you a bit of context about what you'll be seeing. In designing the flapless saddle, I accessed every bit of my background, first as a rider, later a trainer, and an instructor, and finally as a student of anatomy and of biomechanics. It took all these pieces of my educational journey to let me recognize what a profound and immediate effect that our saddle has on the rider's position and effectiveness. And it's not just my perspective. This saddle has outstanding support from our customers, their trainers, their veterinarians, who've all documented the upgrades that happen to horses and riders when using our system. We also have a number of scientists in our corner. In another video, I'll go into detail about how we designed the saddle and then how we tested it. Uh, we verified that it has an improved function in tests that were directed by the world famous equine research scientist, Dr. Hillary Clayton. If you're a research junkie, then Dr. Hillary Clayton needs no introduction. Her research has literally changed the rules and dressage and eventing and improved the lives of so many sport horses. A link to her study of our flapless saddle and the result that riders are more stable in it is posted at the end of this video. All right, let's dive into the rider's hip and thigh. I'd like to start with a basic truth that doesn't really get enough attention. To function optimally as a rider in the saddle, a rider has to be able to mobilize the hip joint and to internally rotate the thigh. I'd like to look at those two critical components separately and to start with thigh rotation, which is certainly something that is discussed and is already taught. A few people are gifted with thighs that internally rotate quite easily, but most of us have to learn this in a process that can take a number of years. If you're new to this term, internal rotation is the exact opposite of the external rotation that a ballet dancer does by turning the thighs outward. As riders, we want to turn the thighs inward. One of the exciting things that happens with flapless is this. Most riders report that as soon as they get in and sit down, their thighs internally rotate naturally and their legs fall automatically and very comfortably down around the barrel. I've prepared a couple of photos that show you exactly what effect the flap has on the rider's hip and thigh rotation and how that affects not just the seat and thigh, but a number of aspects of the rider's position in the saddle. Meet Grace, our demo rider from central New York. You're about to see the results from a two hour window when Grace rode for us, first in her usual saddle and then in an EQ flapless that she was trying for the very first time. This informal session is typical of the effect on riders when they try our saddle. Here's Grace in her own saddle, which is causing her thigh to externally rotate. 
You can see the stress goes down to her foot, which is shoved forward with the toe turned out, while her thigh appears to be stuck on top of the flap and the back of her calf is against the horse. Because she has raised her sternum, her front side is longer than her back. Even though she is just standing still, you can see the tension reflected in the horse. Now here's Grace in the flapless saddle, and it's easy to see that she's sitting much more correctly. Because she can now easily rotate her thigh internally, everything got better. Her thigh is now longer, lying on a 45 degree angle with more openness at the back of her knee. Her pelvis is now neutral, allowing her front and back to be the same correct length. The inside of her leg and thigh lie against the horse, so her toes naturally point straight ahead. And even the horse is feeling it with increased and obvious relaxation. Now let's look side by side to compare the rider's position with and without a flap. Even just sitting still, the flapless saddle is having a number of obvious and positive effects. I've drawn a few lines to highlight key differences. Let's blow these photos up and take a closer look. When it comes to vertical alignment, the rider is so much more correct and flapless, even if we can see a tendency for her to go slightly forward with the lower leg because that's happening no matter what saddle she's in. Compare the wrinkles in the breeches where the rider's torso meets her thigh. The extra wrinkles when she sits on the flapped saddle reflect more tension in her hip. And now for the length of thigh, I'm sure you can see the difference in the longer leg with the bottom of the sole of her boot inches lower than before. In fact, you might think this was a different and taller rider if you didn't know that the only thing that had changed was the saddle. Now let's move on to hip joint mobility, which is just as important as thigh rotation, but I don't think is discussed or taught as clearly. The extension and flexion of the hip joint are critical elements to following the horses moving back without bouncing. I'll show you videos that will help you see this in just a moment. When learning to ride, one of the hardest things for people to get good at is moving their hips. For today, I'm going to focus on the correct mechanic for a dressage rider, which involves keeping the upper body stable through developing significant core strength. In the dressage rider, the hip joint is activated by having a mobile and elastic thigh that functions completely independently of a strong upper body. Sitting trot is a great place to begin this discussion. The most challenging step in becoming a really accomplished rider is learning to sit a big trot and then later learning to create an expressive trot. Beyond core strength, the two critical components that facilitate this skill are the rider's hip joint mobility and the horse's degree of relaxation and swing through the back and trunk. Something we didn't understand until we developed our flapless system is this. Most saddles cause the rider's hip joint to lock or become immobile. And you'll see this in our videos. As soon as you immobilize the rider's thigh, the rider will bounce in the saddle. And quite importantly, when the horse is ridden by somebody with an immobile hip, two things happen. The horse's back will sympathetically lock or become immobile itself and cease to swing. That makes the horse's trot even harder for the rider to sit. When a rider gets into a saddle with a conventional and immobile flap beneath the leg, it becomes difficult to activate and move the hip on top of all that leather. Trainers and professional riders learn early in their development to move on top of the saddle, but for those of us who aren't so accomplished or perhaps aren't so strong, it can become very difficult or even impossible for us to move over all that leather. To ride a horse without bouncing, you have to be able to flex and extend the hip joint in a rhythm that matches the horse's gaits. Flexion and extension means opening and closing the hip joint. This can be accomplished by raising the knee, which gives you flexion, lowering the knee, which gives you extension, or by leaning the upper body forward, which gives you flexion, or straightening or leaning the torso back, which gives you extension. And I'm talking about this angle that my hands have been doing. 
When we invented flapless, we found that the rider's hip was free to move with the horse's back in a way that is very much like the natural and organic way our hips move if we ride bareback, but with all of the stability and the security that a saddle provides. This means the trot is easier to sit, and as Dr. Clayton verified, riders in our saddle are more stable. This is a profound and a profoundly wonderful experience. Come on, let's look at the videos that demonstrate. Let's look at the sitting trot, which can be challenging for a rider and is one gate where our saddle can make a big difference. Although this is an accomplished rider on a lovely mare, we can see issues when we look closely. First, focus on the rider's seat. She's being tossed into the air with every other stride. Although she is trying to stay with the horse, the effort has caused her to pinch with her knee which makes her lower leg floppy with a turned out toe. And again, showing a lot of try, she has her hip joint extending more than it is flexing so that her shoulders are always behind her hips. Now watch what happens when we change to our saddle. First, note the seat. Grace is absolutely glued to the saddle because she is finally able to activate her hip joint, which allows her to stay with the movement of the horse. What else got better? Her leg is longer, her knee is no longer pinching, and her entire leg is elastic, moving in sync with the horse instead of flopping. Her back is straight, and she is flexing and extending her hip joint with every stride instead of being locked in extension pattern. To be sure you are able to see all the rider upgrades, let's look at the two clips side by side and in slow motion. Take a moment to focus on and compare all the things we've just noticed about the rider's seat and position. They will be a lot more obvious in slow-mo. Now, just because we can, let's finish by taking a quick look at some of the positive effects on the horse. In the flapped saddle, the mare is short in her neck, tipped onto the forehand, her back is hollow, which shows as a dip just behind the saddle, and she's significantly understepping, which is obvious when you look at the proximity of the inside hind leg to the inside foreleg. Now, in the flapless saddle, the upgrades begin. The mare is stretching into the contact, lengthening her neck. Her back is up, as you can see by the fullness in the loins behind the saddle. And she is pushing from behind with a correctly rotated pelvis that lets her step under enough that her inside hind leg is creating a V with the inside foreleg. And now for today's final image. Here are the two stills from the video side by side that make it really easy to see all of the upgrades that this horse and rider pair enjoyed when they moved over to our saddle. As you just saw, the videos make some very clear points. The dramatic differences speak for themselves and have, I hope, piqued your curiosity and perhaps inspired you to try our saddle. To learn more about the remarkable, reimagined, flapless saddle and all the modular elements that we combine to give you a custom and completely adjustable fit, please check out the other videos in our series. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll check out the rest of our Science Behind the Saddle series. We welcome you to follow us, subscribe, all the usual ways will find us. And if you'd like to get going with a saddle trial of your own, reach out to us through our website at saddlescience.com. Thank you.